so uh, very good morning everyone so today we'll be seeing how to take perfect examination for respiratory system i know i'm making these this video quite late but i guess it will be better than if i'd have made it before so let's start so basically i would like to thanks my seniors my teachers uh, books i have referred to all the books our patients for who helped me in learning and acquiring this knowledge and today I'm in a position to share this knowledge with you guys so let's start so basically we start the general examination patient was conscious cooperative oriented to time place and person comfortable at rest so when a patient is discomfortable at rest is uh, that could be the question so that is frontal lobe dysfunction if there are patient if the patient is having any, any cardiac or respiratory pathology that time patient will have will be discomfortable there will be dyspnea at rest well, what is the tripod position patient will be leaning forward comment about bo his body a nourishment use of accessory muscle is there or not accessory muscles are like stenically domestoid nasal uh, alar nasi scalenes group uh, and then comment about tattoo marks could be there in case if the patient have hiv plus tb or could be also associated with sarcoidosis comment about nicotine staining of finger which tells you about tobacco use then coming to the general examination uh, patient might have anemia due to tuberculosis uh, when there is a tuberculosis there is a bone marrow involvement anemia could be also there in case of there is a hemoptysis or there is anemia of uh, chronic disease then there is um, ictus you have to comment about whether the patient have jaundice in case of hepatopulmonary syndrome or if the patient is on anti tuberculosis drug then due to the side effects uh, patient might have jaundice if there is a drug induced uh, liver injury which we call as dili Uh, or there could be alpha one entry trips in deficiency. Cl uh, talking about clubbing and cyanosis, we will be dealing in the upcoming slide in detail in this uh, video. And uh, generally, lymph adenopathy you have to examine the supraclavicular lymph node because right and left lung uh, has a lymphatic drainage to these lymph nodes and. parietal pleura has lymphatic drainage to axillary lymph node so you have to also assess axillary lymph node and in case of tb there could be matted lymph nodes which are painless so can if there's a tb lymph node so that could be also one of the sign there could be pedal edema in case of right heart failure or cord pulmonary which we say or bronchiectasis bronchiectasis causes a uh, pedal edema due to cord pulmonary and due to amyloidosis or there could be protein loss due to the sputum which might cause pedal edema so coming to the cyanosis cyanosis you have to differentiate peripheral um, central versus peripheral central will it's not like they will have only diagnosis at the tongue or inner surface of lung with that they will also have peripheral cyanosis central cyanosis occurs when there is arterial oxygenation less than or equal to 85% and peripheral cyanosis is most intensely seen at nail beds and it may resolve by gentle warming of extremities cyanosis generally depends on hemoglobin uh, concentration oxygen saturation cardiac output color of the skin thickness of the skin state of the cutaneous capillaries then there is something called uh, pseudo cyanosis what happens is there is no cardiac or pulmonary causes and uh, in pseudo cyanosis there is also skin will not blanch under the pressure so what are the causes it could be any metal toxicity like silver nitrate iodide or any lead it could be also due to drugs which are like phenothiazide amiodarone chloroquine or hydrochloride then uh, let's look at the causes of cyanosis uh, in cyanosis these all are the causes but other than that like if you see, if you see cyanosis with v's if the cyanosis with v's think of copd asthma foreign body if there is cyanosis with accessional dyspnea then think of ild interstitial lung disease and heart failure if there is cyanosis with uh, orthopnea or paroxysmal nocturnal disease uh pnd then think of left ventricular f- 
failure. If the sinuses aggravates by exposure to cold uh, in peripheral in case of peripheral sinuses, then think of Raynaud's phenomena. This is a very important viva question they might ask. Then sinuses with chest pain. Think of tension pneumothorax or pulmonary thromboembolism. If there is, which will be next, sinuses with clubbing, then think of any congenital heart disease, bronchitis, lung abscess, pulmonary AV shunt. Now coming to the clubbing. Clubbing is very very important in respiratory case. They will ask you a lot of question about it. It was first described by Hippocrates. Uh, that's why it's also called as Hippocratic finger. Like third grade, most of the time you will say parrot beak appearance or drumstick. Or uh, the first grade will have only fluctuation of nail bed. How do you assess the uh, fluctuation of nail bed is very very important. You have to uh, stabilize the pulp of the finger and then try to move the nail bed. Then the second grade is called as fluctuation plus increased uh, anterior posterior and transverse diameter. There is obliteration of lovey bond angle or shamrod sign. What is shamrod sign is when the angle between the nail and the nail bed uh, is called as hyponychial angle or then this normal angle is 160 to 165 degree for the fingers. Uh, so when when these fingers are joined together, there is a diamond shape formation between the these two finger, these two distal phalanges. In these two distal phalanges, when diamond sign is lost, then we call samrat sign is disappears. So that is kind of grade two. And grade four is combination of all plus periosteal thickening of bones, which we also call as hypertrophic osteopathy. Hypertrophic osteopathy is painful and generally seen in case of bronchial cancer, mesothelioma, cystic fibrosis, generally treated by vagotomy and underlying disease need to be addressed. And uh, clubbing generally most common mechanism which they say is growth factor, platelet derived growth factor is most common hypothesis. Other theories are like circulatory vasodilation, neural tissue hypoxia, hypoxia genetical uh, causes or vagal stimulation clubbing generally takes two to three weeks time to occur and most commonly it is seen first in the index finger if you see acute clubbing then think of lung abscess empyema thoracic or sabe subacute bacterial endocarditis if there is very recurrent clubbing that could be seen in case of pregnancy so these are the primary causes of clumbing pulmonary causes cardiac hepatic gastric idiopathic also congenital poisoning or mess what is very important is these scenarios for you like they may be clubbing limited to only upper extremities clubbing limited to only lower extremities clubbing is only on one side unilateral clubbing is there only in one digit clubbing is there which is very associated with painful clubbing so all these causes you should know generally no clubbing you will f you will not find clubbing in copd cases if it is there then most time most likely think of lung cancer or bronchitis if clubbing plus and any smoking history you find then think of bronchiogenic carcinoma idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and if any there, there was any history of asbestos plus clubbing then think of pleural mesothelioma and now think of clubbing with palpitations then think of cyanotic congenital heart disease clubbing with dry cuff if there is any dry cuff then think of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis or pleural mesothelioma or empyema thoracis if clubbing is there with purulent sputum then think of bronchitis lung abscess if there is clubbing with hemoptysis then think of bronchitis or bronchogenic carcinoma when there is clubbing with chronic abdominal problem think of ulcerative colitis Crohn's disease or malabsorption syndrome when clubbing is there in case of fever then it means inflammation is there then think of subacute bacterial endocarditis SAPE or lung abscess or empyema thoracis then there is something called pseudo clubbing like in pseudo clubbing, clubbing means there is no pulmonary GI or uh, uh, cardiac causes but clubbing is still there so what type how do you differentiate is generally it would be asymmetrical involvement of finger low vib bond angle would be normal and uh, x-ray will show terminal uh, will so it will show acro osteolysis in the terminal finger 
and causes could be sublingual tumor or cyst or subperiosteal bone resorption generally if you find uh, like there will be uh, people who are carpenters or who use hammer so they might also develop clubbing so those that is also one of the uh, scenario where you might find clubbing without any systemic illness uh, continuing the general examination you have to look for neck any thyroid soiling or trickle tug uh, this we will see uh, later in the palpation part how to look for trickle tug then look for any asterixis which could be associated in obstructive or restrictive diseases so here i would just like to uh, enumerate what are the obstructive diseases obstructive diseases of lung are copd bronchial asthma bronchitis cystic fibrosis or any upper way obstruction is there what are the restrictive lung diseases restrictive lung diseases are interstitial fibrosis any advanced fibrosis is there any deformed thoracic cage is there or any advanced occupational diseases are there or any hypoventilation syndrome so sometime your examiner might ask uh, what are the obstructive diseases or restrictive lung diseases and uh, why do you look for asterixis it could be there in these halitosis any superative lung disease gynecomastia any drug related or any bronchogenic carcinoma then there is a uh, small muscle wasting could be there which could be due to pancos tumor this pancos tumor are superior circus tumor involving cervical plexus of c8 and t1 and there you might find horner syndrome this is very common and they will ask what is horner syndrome which has ptosis meiosis anophthalmosis and hydrosis loss of ciliospinal reflex generally patient with copd uh, you might find pursing of lips so what is this pursing of lips they try to increase the higher respiratory flow by pursing the lips what they trying to do they are prolonging the expiration which will open the airway for longer duration their respiratory tract is little increased which helps them in relieving their symptom so see in, especially in case of copd or emphysema done to increase higher respiratory flow by increasing the air pressure during expiration this is very important and then something called dal sign what happens above the knee patches of hyperpigmentation of bruise could be seen but due to the constant tenting of position of hands or elbow seen in case of copd patients then general mark external markers of tuberculosis this could be asked very very quite often lupus vulgaris which has reddish brown plate uh surrounded by yellowish nodule seen mainly on neck face and extremities scrofular derma arises from extension of underlying tb infected lymph node generally will present as nodule abscess then it will ulcerate then there is tuberculosis cutis orificialis you know, what happens is it presents a red or yellow colored nodule that ulcerate around the mucosal orifice like lip mouth anogenital region then there is tuberculosis chancre which is reddish brown papponodular lesion with erodes and produces a shallow painless ulcer then there is tuberculosis varicosa cutis which is small solitary asymptomatic reddish brown papule this progresses to a large irregular varicosa papule then there is lichen scrofulo uh, sorum which is common in trunk and proximal extremities as asymptomatic lichenoid form follicular and parafollicular papules are there scaling is minimum or absent then there is erythema nodus induratum which could be a uh, flare or which may ulcerate or may reoccur every 3 to 4 month generally it is better felt than seen and they are painful then there is phytonectular conjunctivitis which are necrotizing papules and cluster or yellowish color then there could be other things which i already told matted painless lymph nodes there could be gibbers there could be any bleeding of spermatic cord in case of epididymo or chitis or there could be ulcer in the posterior side of the scrotum so examining genitalia is also very important then external uh, markers for sarcoid in sarcoid there could be something called lofgren syndrome so what happens in this syndrome is there is it is an acute presentation of systemic sarcoidosis and it has triad of three thing erythema nodosum there is erythema there is bilateral hilar lymph adenopathy 
plus there is fever and arthralgia so these things will be found then there is vaginal granulomatosis which is pulmonary vasculitis is there then there is chuck straw syndrome chuck straws will have uh, generally a very classical feature of asthma there is uh, peripheral blood eosinophilia is present and there is extra pulmonary vasculitis is present yellow nail syndrome they will have yellow nail plus lymphedema plus pleural effusion might be there lymphedema plus pleural effusion so these are generally found in yellow nail syndrome then lung cancer might have, might have acanthosis nigricans which has brown and black markings in the neck or armpit tripe palms which are thickening of the palm then there is basex which has akeratosis paraneoplastica or there is soreciform eruption of the acral surfaces there is uh, carcinoid syndrome which may have flushing paraneoplastic uh, fembigus might have serval oral erosion and polymorphous cutaneous lesions might be there others could be congenital or developmental disorders or collagen vascular disorders in dermatomyositis or systemic cirrhosis uh, how it affects respiratory system is uh, through uh, in interstitial lung disease might be there there could be pulmonary hypertension there could be pneumonia there could be hemorrhage there could be malignancy so how this is how collagen vascular diseases affects the lung then coming to the vitals blood pressure respiratory rate pulse spo2 and temperature so this you should know pulse and respiratory rate have a ratio of 1 ratio 4 when there is a inspiration the systolic blood pressure will decrease by 10 mm hg if this decrease is more than 10 mm hg the in the systolic blood pressure as, as the person uh does the inspiration then there could be that is called as pulses paradox pulses paradox is defined as inspiratory fall in systolic pressure more than 10 mm of hg and it is classic classically seen in cardiac tamponade acute asthma or acute exasperation of copd definitely you should know what is normal respiratory rate normal respiratory rate of an adult is 10 to 20 so tachypnea sometimes some authors say more than 20 but majority of the people do agree that more than 24 can be classified as tachypnea and the acute causes of tachypnea would be uh, like this is a pulmonary and extra pulmonary i am just telling you in a separate classification when you look at the acute causes there could be foreign body uh, in the respiratory Track, there could be embolism, acute exacerbation of COPD or asthma. And when we look at the chronic, uh, chronic will have obstructive or restrictive lung diseases, which I have already enumerated. Tachypnea with fever, if, if fever is also present, then uh, think of infection like pneumonia is there, uh, or there is any empyema. Then tachypnea with dry cough. think of ild asthma extra pulmonary causes tachypnea with productive cough think of any parenchymal disease having bronchitis bronchitis cystic fibrosis or abscess then think uh, when there is uh, tachypnea with hemoptysis is there when there is a uh, tachypnea with hemoptysis think of any cancer thromboembolism bronchitis when the pulmonary bronchial artery or pulmonary artery is affected good good pascia syndrome is there vasculitis is there uh, think when there is tachypnea with acute chest pain think of pneumothorax embolism infarction pleurisy and so that's why so whenever tachypnea is there always look for any fever uh, look for extremities whether they are wa- warm or cold sinuses any edema or whether any tachycardia is there bradycardia when the respiratory rate is low could be these are the causes then these are hyperapnea uh, it means there is increase in the depth of respiration if the depth of respiration is increased then we call as hyperapnea so moving to the respiratory system proper we will be dealing with inspection first then palpation then percussion and then auscultation so in that 
first would be the upper respiratory uh, system in which you have to examine the nose and septum upper respiratory tract extend from nasal opening till larynx or the voice back box in the trachea uh, with the trachea then um, in that you have to look at the nose septum oral cavity uh, in case of uh, in the uh, there is dental caries then there are higher chances a patient may aspirate it to the lower tract which may result into abscess or any pneumonia aspiration pneumonia uh, and that's how it said that lung abscess generally lung abscess is common in epileptic patient or patient in coma or patient who are in alcohol severe, severe alcoholic dependence is there so what happens they try to aspirate and they might to have lung abscess and at the end of this video i'll tell you why uh, this lung abscess or why the foreign body generally goes toward or uh, toward the right lung than the left lung this is a very important question and nasal septum might be uh, you have to look at the nasal septum whether it is perforated or any bleeding because nasal septum is affected in vaginal disease or if the person is cocaine user look at the pharynx sinuses and larynx then uh, coming at the inspection make sure the patient is sitting or standing patient does not have to lie down because what happens when the person lies down he's in supine position the mattress will restrict the movement and especially if you're doing percussion also is that percussion lymph uh, percussion notes might be altered and uh, so uh, always examine the patient in sitting or standing position uh, patient has to expose uh, till the upper part of the abdomen or till the umbilicus you can say because you have to comment on the shape size of the chest uh, normal shape of the chest is generally oval with its anterior posterior diameter is less and the transverse diameter is more so this is the transverse diameter and this one this part is the anterior so the anterior posterior diameter is less and the transverse diameter is late is bigger look at the symmetry whether the whether it is symmetry or not whether the nipples are the same level shoulders or any prominence uh, shoulder or bony prominence at the same level or you have to compare right side with left side in the respiratory system most of the time uh, like you'll be confused like how to present your findings so what you have to do is comment on this use this model is very nice like anteriorly supraclavicular area infraclavicular area mammary area and inframammary area laterally both the side you have to examine laterally axillary area and infraxillary area posteriorly you have to examine it sup suprascapular area and interscapular area and then infrascapular area so always comment on like systematically you will never miss that if you go like this whether the ribs are oblique or not then abnormal chest where all you will find this barrel shaped chest is generally seen in copd or uh, like emphysema it occurs due to over inflated lung chest becomes more cylindrical there is short neck how do you confirm the short neck by measuring the distance between cricoid cartilage and suprasternal notch and generally it is 4 to 5 cm in length so this barrel chest is also seen in case of osteoarthritis affecting the ribs so you can find in copd emphysema or any osteoarthritis affecting the ribs in emphysema if we talk about uh, that there is depression of diaphragm which leads to paradoxical movement of lower costal margin of inspiration so this is also called as hoover sign this is very important they say then uh, pectus carinatum if you look uh, this pectus carinatum is what are its causes it's called as pigeon chest this prominent sternum uh caused by congenital asd or vsd they could be prolonged or severe childhood asthma there could be chronic nasal or nasopharyngeal obstruction rickets you can find and this pectus carinatum could be associated with syndromes like edwards syndrome down syndrome marfan syndrome any morico syndrome osteogenesis imperfecta homocystinuria the pectus carinatum generally people are asymptomatic and seen during child growth or some growth spurt is there during that time it's most of the time diagnosed pectus excavatum opposite of the carinatum and 
uh, it is commonly associated with rickets, marfan, Allardeno syndrome, scoliosis, celiac disease, spinal muscular atrophy, and it has cardiac and pulmonary effect both. Then other deformity which you might find is flyelgus. What is flyelgus? It is secondary to multiple could be refractures and this depression of diaphragm causes injured area to cave inward producing up again paradoxical thoracic movement is seen in breathing so this that could be there in flyel chest then there is harrison sulcus which is also another favorite viva question generally they ask that is a horizontal groove where diaphragm attaches to the ribs and harrison sulcus is associated with chronic asthma copd and rickets abnormal chest you have to look is there any bulging or fullness or any retraction or any localized bulging so these are the causes which you can read and then in the lower respiratory system you have to comment about what is the type or manner of respiration it is abdominal thoracic or any abnormal so what happened is abnormal abdominal uh, movement is seen uh, which is interplay of abdominal muscles seen in young infants and when we talk about thoracic uh, it's primarily involved intercostal uh, muscles are involved into this so what happens in normal human persons what happens when the there is inspiration abdominal and abdominal and thoracic movements uh, move synchronously and uh, there is both expanding in inspiration and contraction during exhalation so what uh, could be the abnormal type thoracic in men and children abdominal purely abdominal respiration in women abdominal or respiratory paradox or there could be respiratory alterations then they have, we have to comment about rhythm rhythm could be regular or irregular when we talk about irregular uh okay first let's talk about regular when there is regular abnormal rhythm then think of keen stroke respiration or they could which is seen in brain death uh, brain sorry there could be chain stroke uh, respiration seen in brain injury or high altitude there could be co small respiration seen in diabetic ketoacidosis or alcoholic poisoning when we look at the uh irregular abnormal rhythm there is biot respiration seen in head trauma brain abscess heat stroke there could be apneostic breathing or cluster breathing ataxic breathing central neurogic uh, hyperventilation and sometime even pursed lip breathing is also put into irregular abnormal rhythm uh you have to comment about whether uh, accessory muscles are used or not i have already informed steatocleidomastoid scleny uh, scalene group of muscles then other respiratory muscles they might ask you what are name all the other resp- uh, accessory muscles mm, then you have to say serratus anterior pectoralis major and minor upper trapezius latissimus medialis erecta spinae lumborum quadratus subclavius nasal ali normally when accessory uh, muscle movement is not visible uh, what happens in uh, high negative intrathoracic pressure is there is inspiratory indrawing of suprasternal and supraclavicular fossa so that movement you can see if there is a negative intra uh, thoracic pressure is high you have to comment about uh, whether the movement respiratory movement is restrictive or not this is a very very important it looks very sp- simple or easy thing but you have to remember that best way to diagnose the pathological site is a site which is having a decreased respiratory movement compared to the normal site so remember the site which move less which move less is having the disease so this is the basic funda and only during inspiration you might be able to find out okay this side is affected this side and all you have to compare right and left you have to see whether there is a unilateral restriction of the chest movement or bilaterally you feel it is reduced or any diaphragmatic movement is re- reduced and during the respiratory movement like you have to like during the inspiration uh, you have they might ask normally what type of movement like theoretically they might ask you so ribs undergo pump and handle movement 
and bucket handle movement so both these two things pump and handle bucket handle movement you have to go and read in a physiology class and divinest movement of the upper or apical region could, could be found in uh, collapse consolidation fibrosis due to pulmonary tuberculosis or in or diminished lower lobe uh, movements are seen generally due to pleural effusion these are the common diagnosis which i'm telling you so then you have to comment about the position of trachea trachea is shifted to any of the side or not in the palpation we'll be dealing about this position of trachea and mediastinal shift in detail when it shifts to which side and what are the causes trail sign is very very important generally there is prominent of callicular head of stenocleidomastoid toward the shift side of the trachea generally trachea is shifted to the right and little bit um, because uh, and, and this stenocleidomastoid and trachea both are enclosed by the same D fish of the neck. Then you have to comment up supraclavicular fossa, whether it's symmetrical, free, and equal respiratory movement. If there is unilateral increase in the grooving of the supraclavicular fossa, then these are the causes: unilateral fullness, unilateral diminution of the movement. Comment about subcostal angle whether it is in looks increased or decreased then is intercostal space uh, why i'm moving so fast is because uh, i think these slides are more than 90 slides so this video would be quite long but and most of the uh, thing in respiratory system looks very theoretical but it's very interesting when you start practicing and you start finding you know connecting the dots okay in inspection i found this let's confirm this finding with palpation this is there this is there and then you are able to reach the diagnosis but for to do that you need to read actually quite you know intensively and try to use your mind you have to use your physics behind the chest movement you have to use each and every detail so that's why because i know you will take screenshot of this slides and you can remember what are the causes that thing you don't have too much bother uh, only thing is you should know what all not to miss and how to connect the dot so then you have to look at the intercostal space whether they are symmetrical free or equal in both side or not when there is a widening when there is narrowing intercostal retraction which they are increase in these causes positioning of apical impulse apical impulse might be shifted to left or right these are the causes mild degree of retraction during uh, inspiration is kind of normal in case of uh, intercostal retractions they might ask you what is apex speed or ap apical impulse it is the outermost lowermost point in the pericardium and it is will be confirmed in palpation uh, because it be felt as a thrust on the chest wall then look at the skin over the chest wall skin over the chest uh, might be shiny in case of uh, empyema or any uh, hepatic amoebiasis is there normally uh, if you look at the now look at the veins over the chest wall normally chest veins are not visible or engorged superficial vein in chest are visible in case of superior vena cava obstruction or sometimes there is azygous vein obstruction that time you can see in superior vena cava obstruction uh, uh, you might see a dilated torturous veins there would be swelling or edema of the face neck or the upper limb when there is unilateral engorgement of vein in the neck think of pancos tumor i have already explained in previous slides uh, it's a tumor or superior sulcus tumor which will also have swelling in one hand dilated tor torturous vein on one side there will be puffiness on part one part of the face shoulder arm pain pain will be in the dermatome zone of c8 t1 t2 Horner syndrome because there will be sympathetic chain involvement there would be weakness and atrophy of the muscles of the hand jugular vein distension during expiration indicates that there is Intrathoracic pressure has become excessively positive due to the any airway obstruction. From the back, you have to look at the shoulder level, whether there is any drooping of shoulder or not. Drooping can occur in case there is any fibrosis or any collapse of the lung. It can be confirmed by the lower scapula angle. 
below the seventh intercostal space look at the spine any scoliosis kyphosis gibbous at the medial border of scapula space between medial border of scapula inferior angle of the scapula winging of scapula if there is any winging of scapula uh, you can confirm it when the person is asked to push against the wall then what it means is uh, serratus anterior muscle is affected which involves long thoracic nerve so long thoracic nerve is affected this is abnormal chest and spine when there is drooping of shoulder when there is scoliosis these are the causes kyphosis ankylosing spondylitis straight back syndrome so moving on to the palpation a very important part it is confirm to confirm the finding of in in inspection which is like decrease movement trachea position chest wall deformity and to discriminate structures and get more finding so looking at the palpation always i already told you examine both the side anteriorly both the side laterally and posterior and uh, for this patient can be lying down or sitting but a neck has to be in neutral position hand of the physician has to be warmed like you can rub your warm hands and get them warm always compare the finding which with one side with another palpate lightly over the area of chest and look for any temperature raise or any tenderness tenderness is assessed in intercostal space and the ribs both the things and it is assessed by looking at the face of the patient if there is any wing, wincing is the spine tenderness is assessed gently when we we'll have to also look at the tenderness over the spine gently tap over the spinous processes that time you can also assess it spinous spine processes do evidence of neuromuscular neurovascular bundle involvement is if there is neuro vascular bundle involvement is there then what does it have it has tenderness rib tenderness there is diaphragm palsy phrenic nerve is affected and we will see how to assess unilateral diaphragmatic palsy versus bilateral what are the differentiation generally uh, when we talk about um, tenderness at rib then um, it could be due to fracture costochondritis osteomyelitis osteomyositis spinal injury or tumor when we look for cause uh, of tenderness at intercostal space then it could be intercostal muscle injury sprain or any impyma liver abscess subphrenic abscess or lung abscess you have to look also for any swelling swelling could be due to any tumor sarcoma granuloma impyma actinomycosis or any tuberculosis nocardiosis or blastomycosis then coming to the measurement part so when you come for the measurement part uh, you have to assess the diameter of the chest uh, i already told you uh, you have to assess the ap diameter and the transverse diameter how to assess these two diameter is you have to use two cardboards place one cardboard here and place second cardboard here you can take the help of your uh, any other person or your or the attender or the patient himself can help you to place these cardboards and then measure the transverse diameter similarly one cardboard at anteriorly one at the back and then assess the anterior posterior diameter normal chest is oval in shape and its ap diameter is less and what is the ratio Trans transverse versus ap ratio is 7 ratio 5 if ap diameter is more than transverse diameter then think of pectus carinatum an increase in ap diameter is also seen in case of i already told you barrel chest or equivalent to transverse then also major hemithorax measurement if one side is affected or the other side spinal scapular distance expansion of chest in inspiration is very very important you to measure at the nipple level in case of men in case of female above or just below the breast you can measure and normally first you tell the person to completely exhale put the measuring tape and then ask the person to inhale normal chest expansion is 5 to 8 if it is less than 2 then think of emphysema fibrosis effusion pleurisy neuromuscular vascular neuromuscular weakness then cricosternal distance this is what i was talking before suprasternal notch to cricoid cartilage below the adams angle to measure normal it is 3 to 4 fingers or 4 to 5 cm this distance is reduced in barrel shaped chest theek hai barrel shaped chest is seen in emphysema or copd uh, hyperinflated lung 
so movement of chest wall this is very very important they might ask you or demonstrate how did you assess the chest wall movement for the upper lobes i have you may have, might have to examine from the back the apex part apex part is also called as chronic isthmus so and you have to also assess the same upper lobes from the front of the patient also generally respiratory movement should be symmetrical equal on both the side and during this you can ask the patient to take deep breaths at the apex of lung you have to appreciate the up down movement at the mammary or infrascapillary area you have to appreciate the horizontal movement from the back place the two hand over the apex thumb over the spinal vertebra and ask the patient to deep respiration note the movement of your hand whether they are moving equally or not at the upper lobes or the apex of the lung and uh, see how much is this uh, whether the thumbs are diverging or not then from the front uh place the fingers and clavicle and extend your thumb palms over the anterior chest wall near the clavicle ask the patient to do deep breath note the divergence of thumb uh, how it is whether one is diverging too much or one is having less then uh, similarly for the infra clavicular region costal margin and lower lobe posteriorly you have to do you have to grasp the chest behind with two hands and finger at the 10th rib for costal margin uh, cover the costal region with finger tips of the thumb in the region of xiphoid process infra clavicular region fingers in axillary line palm on chest wall and thumb touching each other they may ask you what are the causes of upper lobe fibrosis that could be tb celiacus uh, silicosis sarcoidosis then this is what i was saying in during the inspection is very important palpation of trachea we will use three finger technique keep the index and ring finger on medial end of the clavicle so index index finger and the ring finger on each side of trachea on the medial end of clavicle with the middle with the middle finger palpate with the tip don't poke your nails you have to make sure your nails of the examiners are trimmed okay you don't have to poke or pinch it with your nail and then track the trachea that can tracking of the trachea can be done uh, gently in the so or else you can just palpate the trachea in the suprasternal notch feel the tracheal ring compare the space whether the space in the left or right side is increased or it's equal on the both side normally i told you trachea might be slightly deviated toward the right and uh, right side of the sternomastoid muscle might be slightly prominent as a trail sign little bit but if at all trachea might be shifted to the opposite there is some lesion in the lung like during inspection only you find found out and the left uh, that the right side of the chest is moving less and but the trachea is deviated toward the left if the right side of the chest is moving less then means the lesion is on the right but the trachea is shifted toward the left so opposite side of the lesion could be there in tumor of the apex pancos tumor enlarged lymph node enlarged of the lateral lobe of the thyroid tension pneumothorax and other reason and trachea shifted to same side of the lesion these are the causes so this tracheal tug it's also called as oliver sign pulsation of aortic aneurysm is felt on the cricoid cartilage when the patient neck is hyperextended campbell sign there is downward displacement of trachea when you try to palpate it and your finger is moving down excess uh, exacerbation of copd and when mediastinal is pulling the trachea down so these are the uh, three indicators of mediastinal where the mediastinum is pull to the reason or push to the reason for this patient should be sitting or standing trachea is the upper trachea denotes uh, the upper mediastinum and heart the apex beat denotes the lower mediastinum generally apical impulse will also tell you something about dextrocardia or dextroversion so what is the difference dextrocardia dextrocardia is heart is present in the right hemithorax and it could be seen uh, in case of carter jenner syndrome like what happens in carter jenner syndrome carter jenner syndrome will have dextrocardia plus bronchiectasis plus chronic sinusitis then what is dextroversion dextroversion is extra cardiac causes make the trachea and apex beat shift toward the right and seen in case of uh, left sided pleural effusion or pneumothorax then vocal fremitus what is vocal fremitus it is the perception 
or the perceptible vibration of the chest wall during a person speak trans uh, so what happens sound or this vibrations are transmitted by respiratory tracts so it depends on the intensity of the sound which is produced by the vocal cord to assess it patient should be in sitting position ask the patient to keep reporting some word like one 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 in tamil we so say say un 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 or say 99 any word which has the word consonant n which produce more vibration like mm, anything with the n will have more vibration you can say any word in its own patient's own uh, mother language mother tongue you can say and then assess it on the anterior chest wall and it should be equal and patient have to you uh, sorry examiner have to use the ulnar side of his hand ulnar side of the a hand is very more sensitive or the base of the fingers to feel the vibration in the chest wall and then compare whether it is equal on both side or not that is vocal fremitus and it is always advised to examine in a systematic way like move in one in systematic way right to left first second intercostal space second intercostal then third then third fourth fourth normally it is seen higher in the upper chest due to the major airways on the upper part then compared to the lower it is felt more on the right side because right bronchus is more wider shorter and it is felt more better on the anterior chest wall compared to the posterior because posterior has more muscles it is less intense on pectoral and scapular region because of the muscles it is more in interscapular region than infrascapular region more in children and females due to the high pitch sound and felt better in thin patients these are normal so these are the patho- pathological vocal fremitus when it is increased uh when it is decreased when it is absent these are the causes absent in case of defect in production or defect in transmission so uh next in palpation uh, you have to look for any unusual sensation tactile fremitus which is adjuvant sound is palpable friction fremitus any plural sound which you could palpate or any other vibration coming on to percussion it was first described in 1761 by leopold oen brugger he noticed his father striking the barrel of liquor to identify which is empty or how much is liquor is used or not and the same thing which was used in medical field was percussion and generally uh, percussion is uh, like we do above the skin and it the sound uh, in the percussion tells about the area up to 2 to 3 cm maximum 5 cm but not more than 5 cm if you are thinking uh, like you are percussing over the abdomen and you are thinking ki you will be able to find about kidney or pancreas will reflecting the sound or giving you the percussion note it's very rare because the depth from the skin is more than 5 cm and and generally these are the basics proceed from resonant area to the dull area and as the change in the percussion note is very easily noticed long axis of the pleximeter the middle finger of the left hand should be parallel to the end uh, or the edge of the organ it should be in close contact no air bubble between the pleximeter and the skin second phalanx of uh, pleximeter f- uh, finger is stuck at 90 degree with the tip of flexor middle finger and of the right hand which is and the motion of the flexor should be snapping movement and it should be at the wrist not at elbow don't do it in elbow do it in wrist and remove the striking finger immediately after the blow and heavy percussion done for deeply seated visceras and light percussion for the superficial visceras now coming to the percussion location how do you do anteriorly on both side patient should be sitting or erect with his hands by side when you are examining on the lateral side ask the patient to keep his hand over his head when you are examining on the posterior side a patient is hand is bent forward rest his hand over the opposite shoulder crossing each other like this patient will be there and then you will be percussing on the back side same at the anterior area directly Percuss over the clavicle without using pleximeter 
finger and at the crown then at chronic and uh, sthamas or at the mid clavicular line anteriorly you have to examine that time you have to use your pleximeter chronic sthamas is an area of resonance over the shoulder bounded medially uh, by the neck and laterally by the shoulder it represents lung and the band of resonance band of resonance is normally 5 to 7 cm in width if it is less than 3 cm then you can say obliteration of chronic isthmus it happens in apical fibrosis atelectasis uh, fibrothorax pancos tumor or massive fluid effusion or tuberculosis and there could be scenario when it is more than 7 cm if it is more than 7 cm unilaterally then it is compensatory hyperinflammation is there in this side because maybe the, if the right side is affected then on the left side there is compensatory hyperinflammation there could be tension pneumothorax apical bulla is there thin wall cavity is there if it is bilaterally enlarged it going to happen in emphysema alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency or bilateral causes could be similar like the unilateral causes which we have already dis discussed so basically at mid clavicular line anteriorly you would be examining at mid axillary line you would be examining laterally and at the back at the scapular line now they might ask you what is the lower border of lung lower border of lung in mid clavicular line is sixth rib this is eighth this is tenth this is for lung now they may ask you where is the pleura pleura is two ribs uh, two spaces downwards so that is at this is at eighth rib this is at tenth and this is at twelfth so like this you have to tell because they might ask you the surface marking they might even ask you uh, the lower lobe middle lobe of the right lung and all this all you have to learn during percussion you have to also look any tenderness is there or not if any tenderness think of empyema or inflammation during percussion there is something also important which they might ask you especially in the posterior side there is something called groco strangle what happens in groco strangle it's in triangular area of dullness at the paravertebral triangle on opposite side of the pleural on the side opposite to pleural effusion so what happens is if there is dullness on the left side then the right side is having the pleural effusion and there is something called also this is called groco's triangle there is something called groco's sign groco's sign is defined as acute dilatation of heart following any muscle effort sign is different triangle and groco's triangle groco triangle is the posterior uh, paravertebral space there is a area which detects about pleural effusion for percussion you have to make sure you have to constantly do percussion at each intercostal space anteriorly up to the seventh intercostal space uh, on the fifth intercostal space on the right side you might find liver dullness on the left side you might find uh, cardiac border and at the mid axillary line up to eighth intercostal space and at the scapular region till the eleventh space these are the various type of note resonant hyper resonant tympanic dull and stony dull but in books uh, like you might uh, heard a word called woody dullness which is used for consolidation or there could be impaired note so what happens uh, impaired is directly uh, something like impaired note is when you directly percuss over your lips the type of sound which you hear is impaired seen in fibrosis or collapse dull note is something like when you percuss over your nasion that is the uh, scene in consolidation or collapse stony dull when you percuss over your head that time generally in stony dull there will be a feeling of resistance by the percussing finger the there is feel uh, 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 person can feel a pain in the pleximeter finger and there is a flat type of percussion note and pitch is high and uh, so over the normal rung will be able having a resonant over the abdomen and hollow viscera they will be tympanic coming to the tidal percussion it has to be done anteriorly on the anterior chest wall and on the posterior anteriorly it is done at the mid clavicular line we percuss and then stop at the fifth intercostal space at the upper border of liver as soon the dullness is there we stop we then we ask the person to do to take deep inspiration as soon he deeply inspires the liver goes down and then uh, then you percuss then it becomes resonant so then we say okay there is a change in the dullness it was due to the liver border the upper border of the liver 
if there is no change then it could be due to emphysema pneumothorax or bulla of the base it is done the sterile percussion anterior chest wall is done for the upper and uh, upward enlargement of liver or any sub diaphragmatic abscess is there from the right side parenchyma or pleural disorder similarly a uh, tidal percussion done on posterior side percuss from the back as the patient to deeply inhale and withhold percuss along the scapular line along the lower border is marked change mark the change from the resonant to dull as the patient to again like exhale and then percuss upward where the note again become resonant so so if there is no change in percussion think of emphysema pneumothorax if there is dullness in inspiration or expiration think of effusion dullness or inspiration and remember diaphragm on the right side is higher around 2.5 cm higher on the right side due to the bulk of liver this is also a very famous important viva question why the diaphragm is little higher on the right side due to the bulk of liver generally they say so the tidal uh, percussion which we have done uh, we see then first at the inhalation where was the upper part of resonance then at exhalation and then what we try to do is we try to men- measure this distance we measure it and normally it is 4 to 5 cm that is diaphragmatic excursion it measures the movement of di- diaphragm diaphragm excursion uh, actually measures the movement of dome of the diaphragm how much it moves or not then in percussion there is something called drop space drop space is a semi lunar space on the left side between the 6th and the 9th interco- uh, rib uh, at the left mid axillary line what is the content of drop space it is fundus so this is the left border right border upper border and lower border and if you find so generally fundus of stomach part of intestine i told it will have a tympanic node on percussion if the up there is absence of tympanic node then that could be left sided pleural effusion splenomegaly carcinoma of stomach full stomach sinus invertus if there is shifting of drop space upward then think of any diaphragmatic palsy left lower lobe collapse of fibrosis of the lung percussion of the heart for this patient has to be in supine and then you have to look at the right border left border avert sign avert sign is area of dullness at the angle of left scapula with increase in vocal fremitus bronchophony and it is in- indicative of pericardial effusion so when we will uh, when i'll be making video on cardiovascular exemption that time we will be discussing in detail about this percussion of the heart if you had found of anything if you are suspecting any fluid in the pleural um, cavity then you have to confirm with shifting dullness shifting dullness is present mainly in hydropneumothorax it is absent in pleural effusion but sometime it can be also present what happens is uh, how do you measure it basically when we percuss when the person is sitting percuss from about it downward as soon you found the dull node where you believe is the fluid is there you can keep your index finger or the uh, fleximeter finger there and ask the patient to lie down when the patient lies down the fluid goes uh, back in at one particular level wait for few seconds then again percuss it will become resonant it definitely confirms that there is a fluid which is moving with the patient's body movement and it is very confirmatory sign of hydropneumothorax because the fluid shift to the dependent position in effusion it will not move we'll be talking more detail about um, hydropneumothorax and pleural effusion uh, when i'll be giving you tips how to diagnose these two and we'll be looking at the differences in upcoming slides so then you have to do auscultatory per- percussion where you percuss slightly over manubrium with distal phalanx put the stet over the posterior wall of the chest wall and compare the sound on the both side if there is dull on one side then think of any mass or consolidation this was described by uh, lenick and then which was uh, later modified uh, to detect pleural effusion by guarino so in this stethoscope at 3 cm below the last rib mid scapular line percuss along the parallel lines from the apex to downward if dullness is there then think of effusion then these are the just key finding if you think of tenderness think of any empyema pyothorax and shifting dullness will be there for hydropneumothorax there will be no shifting dullness in case of pyothorax or any effusion 
sometime in infusion you might find but very rarely and if you find any s shaped curve of ls this is very very important most of the time they will ask you if what is happens is uh, what happens is that the upper level of the fluid like for example this side of the lung this is this is right and this is left so if the left side of the pleur uh, pleural cavity is having the fluid so the the axillary side will have uh, the fluid would be at the higher level and anteriorly fluid would be at the lower level uh, how do you confirm it you have to confirm it by percussion the anteriorly mark the level of dullness and then laterally you mark and when then posteriorly you mark when you connect uh, the upper level of dullness in these three points the highest is seen in axilla in axilla there will be dullness would be at that higher and anterior and posterior they would be low so that confirms more of more look like ls as shaped curve and it is much better seen in chest x-ray shifting dullness then i told you already present in uh, hydropneumothorax in case of hydropneumothorax there will be straight line of dullness means the fluid is one level just to read if you're interested then you can read about something extra in percussion there that would be percussion myochemia scodiac resonance cracked pot resonance so if you're interested you can read about all these three things also just for the in interest i'm giving you let's move to auscultation it's also a very very important part in auscultation you have to remember a very famous question mcq type uh, stethoscope was discovered by rene theokel lenik in 1861 and normal breath sound the lung sound is bet a low pitch sound low pitch sound are better heard with bell of your stethoscope and especially if you use the diaphragm side to listen to the respiratory sound uh, what happens the skin might stretch when the person is doing inspiration and it might produce sound scaping type of sound which might similarly look like pleural rub so to be careful with that so in auscultation you have to make sure you do it in a quiet area auscultate when the patient is sitting lying down if patient is ill then in supine position otherwise prefer sitting position and do not auscultate through any cloth over the cloth ask better to uh, ask the patient to remove his cloth and then examine it and better to patient to have cough before you auscultate because what happens it will clear the airway secretion and sometime when the patient is having nose nasal congestion like running nose or common cold then some sound nasal sounds might be also heard like patient is having any added sound but it is not there so what during that time what you can do especially in children when there is a nose block then ask the patient to breathe through the mouth this will prevent any sound being produced by any partially occluded nose so we have to look at the breath sound intensity how it is the what is the quality any added sound or not vocal resonance any poster self suction or succussion splash uh so mainly in this we'll be going one by one what are added sound what are brinkle sound it might look little theoretical but more you practice with your faculty with your teacher he will make you hear the, the various different types of sound it will be very much easier for you how to differentiate how to look for it so normal breath sounds uh, would be vesicular which is seen in peripheral part of the lung which will be low or soft pitch rustling type of uh, sound then there could be bronchial sound bronchial sounds are heard over the trachea manubrium uh, infraclavicular area there is a harsh hollow and tubular sound they might be abnormal if in the peripheral part of the lung so this bronchial sound you will hear where all trachea is there till the bifurcation of trachea if you are hearing this bronchial sound in the part of lung then think they are abnormal it could be due to the lobar consolidation which is transmitting the bronchial sound to the periphery and then there could be bronchial vesicular sound which are heard at roots of the lung in this i have to look inspiratory inspiration is longer in vesicular sound in this still expiratory is louder and longer 
and in spirit here it is 1 ratio 1 here the ratio is 2 ratio 3 here the ratio is 1 ratio 1 the mechanism for bronchial is turbulent flow in the tracheal bronchia here the mechanism is laminar flow of the air now we will look at abnormal vesicular sound so abnormal vesicular sound uh, could be tracheal stenosis or normal sound but prolonged expiration or diminished they might ask you in case of pleural effusion why breath sounds are absent like diminished or absent so how why it is there because all the sound which is ref uh, the sound is coming transmitted this is the lung then there is a fluid so all the sound there is a media differences uh, both media have different acoustic properties there is loss of attenuation of sound at the surface and all the sound is reflected at the interface between the media so that is the reason why in pleural diffusion there is absent breath sound then abnormal presence of bronchial sound like i already told you bronchial sound uh, normally heard over the trachea but if it is found in the peripheral part think of abnormality like consolidation upper lobe fibrosis or collapse or superficial lung cavity or massive fluid effusion there are only three conditions where bronchial sounds are absent that is deep seated consolidation consolidation and liver loop or consolidation with pleural effusion generally around 30 percent of consolidation 30 percent of the consolidation you will be able to find bronchial breath sound the concept is that sound travel faster in solid so in during when there is a consolidation trans uh, sound is directly transmitted through the solid mass to the chest that's why you found a uh, bronchial sound in case of consolidation this is also another famous viva question this is this d spine sign generally to check for the anterior mass so there are two ways to assess d spine sign there is another which is uh, percussion method so in the percussion method if you find any sudden dullness at the second or third intercostal space then you can think of any anterior mass uh, if you find any bronchial sound bit below fourth dorsal vertebrae then you still you then you can think of any posterior or uh, middle mediastinal mass if any whisper pectoral loci is heard below third thoracic vertebra then think of any uh, mediastinal mass these are the causes common causes of um, common differential diagnosis of anterior mediastinal mass middle mediastinal mass and differential diagnosis of posterior these are the like subtypes the variations of the bronchial sound tubular type of um, bronchial sound is seen in consolidation or just above the level of pleural effusion it is high pitched and amphoric is metallic type then coming to the adventitious sounds these are the added extra sound uh, which could be uh, continuous or discontinuous continuous sound could be V's which is high pitched and ronchi which is low pitched this differentiation they will most of the time they will ask what is difference between V's and ronchi ronchi will be non musical V's would be musical and the mechanism of action like how what is the mechanism of this mechanism of production they mostly they ask it is produced due to the flow limitation and wall oscillation at the large bronchi and it is produced due to rapid oscillation of the air wall and lateral pressure this is based on Bernoulli's principle so these difference they will ask V's is seen in COPD, bronchospasm, bronchi is seen in tumor or foreign body discontinuous one could be crackle or plural so this will be seen in the next upcoming slide there could be extra there could be other sources of extra sounds like there could be movement of stethoscope is moving over the skin of patient this has happened a lot of 10 person will say oh look look i can hear some extra sound and instead only the steth was rubbing against the skin or there is any movement of any hand or any clothes patient muscle and like I told this happens quite often if you use the diaphragm side of the stethoscope if patient's hair is there or any any broken rib is there or any involvement noise is there then you might uh, get confused whether this is some added sound or actually there is some sound so uh, we'll be discussing about crackles and crepitation in the next slide so crackles can be uh, divided as per their timing early inspiratory mid inspiratory late or expiratory this you will learn with experience only because it's uh, like how to differentiate it is early mid or late 
these are the causes this is the mechanism of production like due to the reopening of more proximal airway from the segmented bronchi to the terminal bronchi and this is uh, explosive reopening you have late and it is affected by postures these are the differences if someone asks you how do you define crackles so the crackles can be defined as high pitched discontinuous we have seen in the previous and kind of bubbling sound and overall if you see the mechanism is parenchyma loses elasticity uh, or the infection causes collapse airway because of that these sounds are produced when there is a force inspiration then the collapse airway open up making a bubbling sound so that is the reason for the crackles and these are the other causes you can see as be this when the crackles are differentiated as per the pitch like they are the fine cracker or coarse cracker so high pitch or low pitch during inspiration it is and generally most of the common for the fine crackles are early stage of pneumonia or congestion late stage you will find coarse crackles bronchitis you will find coarse crackles velcro crackles uh, crackles they say this uh, velcro type of crackles is seen as interstitial lung disease ild this is very important mcq or quite good question of the exam fine crackles uh, are heard at the base of the lung in elderly is also even when they do not have any heart lung disease uh, and they disappear when there is several deep breaths are there because that happens due to due to the old age due to the there is low lung volume in old age there is low lung surfactant this causes atelectasis crackles happens in old age and most common cause of coarse cracker is bronchitis this is the most common cause in of coarse crackers then is the frictional rub this is low pitch repetitive ratchet like sound and sound is interrupted jerking is a nature heard in both phase of of respiration inspiration and expression and this is the difference between crackles and plural rub plural rub is generally generated by mechanism similar to that of bowed string like there is a stretching of lung like a spring the friction and elastic force maintains continuous vibration in the string causing resonant oscillation so it's kind of can be heard like plural rub plural rub is generally very much localized and intensity increases in pressure and tenderness crackles uh, they are generally diffuse uh, when pressure by the chest piece of the stethoscope produce no effect then is examination of vocal resonance or voice sound Uh, to assess this patient should be sitting in sit uh, patient should be in sitting position ask the patient to keep repeating the word which i already told like any word which has consonant n like 1 199 and which will produce more vibration plus place the stethoscope compare the sound with contralateral sound whether it is absent or decreased assess and a lateral side anterior chest wall posterior side in a systematic way that is very important normally right you will hear better than left anatomical position of right bronchus anterior wall better than posterior and interscapular better than infrascapular and more in young patient than old better in female than male and better than thin in obese there is abnormal vocal resonance when it is absent because defect in production of sound or defect in transmission of sound pleural effusion is defect in transmission the examiner might trick you what is a good conductor of why there is of sound why there is absence of vocal resonance in uh, pleural effusion is because there is loss of impedance match this is what you say between air and water then these are the reason why vocal resonance are increased auscultatory finding in lower consolidation is that you find bronchopheny where the patients say 9999 and over the consolidation you will better hear it sound is best or loud heard over consolidation and there could be egophony where the person speaks e e and it um, when you hear it through your stethoscope you will, you will hear the sound uh, like a uh, the sound will mimic like bleating of a goat there is selective amplification of the higher frequency and the lower frequency would be lost yeah. uh, and there will be whisper pectoral okay what happens in this where a pa- you ask the patient to whisper 1 2 3 and when you put your stethoscope it will look like the person is directly speaking over, over your ear 
and this happens because in consolidation because when sound travel fast in solid these are the other finds uh, the test or signs which you can do coin test then in uh, can be seen in pneumothorax when there is a high pitched clicking sound is heard uh, you place a coin on the posterior wall and tap on it using a second coin and place your stethoscope on the anterior side and then when there is a high pitched click sound is heard think the sign is positive pneumothorax scratch sign place the diaphragm of the stethoscope in the midpoint of the sternum scratch the surface of the chest wall with fingers at the point equidistant to the left and right side and compare the sound when the sound is heard louder on the affected side think of pneumothorax hippocratic suction or succussion splash chest of the patient is shaken suddenly by the examiner and then you can hear the sound aided by stethoscope or unaided and if they ask you just just when i'm sick you like which is more specific for pneumothorax then scratch sign is more specific uh, compared to the coin test then other sculptatory hammond sign there is loud cracking or clicking sound uh, then there is which is synchronous with the heartbeat uh, near the left sternal border force expiratory time is increased uh, in case of any airway obstruction then you have to examine the other systems like in the gi system you have to see any any hepatosplenomegaly is there or not whether any polycerocytosis which is like there is fluid in the um, abdomen ascites fluid in the uh, testes or the scrotum hydrocele or any hernia inguinal hernia is happen there with any fluid which happens uh, in case of sle with liver there could be also hepatopulmonary syndrome seen in cld with the cardiac system you have to look for any pericardial effusion sign or any cor pulmonary any complication is there or not with uh, cns system look for any sign of tb meningitis any respiratory failure or superior vena cava syndrome moving ahead just to promote that there is list of important questions prepared by me for general medicine which you can uh, buy it online on kindle which will have questions including from psychiatry and dermat uh, and derma so link will be given in the description box and link even for the performer would be given in the description box you can check that out so the final diagnosis you have to say whether the respiratory system is involved or not anatomy right left which lobe or both lobe which lobe upper middle or lower lobe in the right side or the left side left lobe or upper lobe which lobe is affected you have to clearly specify i have to uh, say whether the parenchyma is involved airway is involved or pleura is involved generally uh, this is to just to differentiate between pleural versus parenchymal diseases parenchymal will have cuff and it would be mainly painless pleura will have painful they might have a dry cough no expectoration will be there these are just example of diseases you have to talk about pathology whether there is consolidation effusion any cavity is there or any um, uh, fibrosis is present you are thinking of whether it is acute or chronic whether it is inf infective or inflammatory any complication like cor pulmonary abscess anything present or not but are the other risk factor this all you have to combine in your respiratory system again just one more promotion there is a free sex education book which i promote and written by me with all the scientific references you will find in this book if anyone wants to um, you can give it to your friends free of course free ebook is there link also i'll tell i'll share in the link and this is just one of my uh, you can call it as agenda or my personal will where i want to promote more sex education um, across the globe which should be freely available based on scientific knowledge so you can refer to your friends if anyone is interested to know more can go through it Uh, now it's more of just um key points you can just uh, take a screenshot or take note of it uh because these will be the common diagnosis and people will be asking like if you are diagnosing any side of the lung having fibrosis or collapse then how do you differentiate clubbing will be present in fibrosis because mostly it be chronic no co in collapse will not have clubbing because it will be mostly acute impaired in percussion decreased breath sound frying crackles and mediastinum will shift to same side here also in collapse mediastinum will be shifted to the same side wasting will be absent because it is acute no added sound absent breath sound percussion will be dull 
and there will be drooping of shoulder on the apex side if the if if the apex is affected then there will be volume loss will be there on both this both the thing in fibrosis and collapse also decrease vocal resonance on both in both the scenarios in collapse uh, there will be trop space may be dull as the lung and heart may try to shift to the free side that could be the thing in fibrosis these are the causes upper or lower lobe then is pleural effusion pleural effusion is very very important you will find chest fullness absence of respiratory movement mediastinal shift generally in pleural effusion they might ask you how much uh, pleural fluid is needed for clinical diagnosis so around 500 ml is needed for clinical detection in chest x ray around 300 ml is needed generally in normal healthy individual around 5 to 10 ml of pleural fluid is present that is normal they might ask you what are the scenario where there is no shift so no shift might occur when there is very mild pleural effusion there is any malignant effusion or there is any loculated or insisted effusion or bilaterally there is a equal effusion so then the trachea is in midline so these are the causes when there is no mediastinal shift these are also very famous by by questions so absent breath sound will be there there would be i told you the reason reflection of sound back because of difference in the media loss of impedance will cause decreased vocal uh, resonance there will be level of dullness i told you in pleural effusion it would be s shaped l s curve and this it will be in case of straight line in case of hydrothorax tony dull in percussion causes are these and differential diagnosis where pleural effusion with volume loss bilateral pleural effusion polycerocytosis i told you the most common cause is sle same site trachea diffusion in bronchogenic malignancy what happens when there is any abdominal um, fluid is there like ascites is there so what happens in case of ascites the fluid may shift from abdominal cavity to the to the lung cavity through diaphragms diaphragms may have small defects less than 1 cm which were are more common in the right side than the left side so during that time abdomen shift fluid when the patient lies down then the fluid might shift from lower to the up so anyone with ascites might have a right side uh, pleural effusion also and sometime tumor or malignancy can also mimic like pleural effusion which can produce lung collapse and mediastinal shift will be there they might uh, this is also very very important viva question they might ask you what is the massive pleural effusion so we say massive pleural effusion when there is fluid more than 50% of hemithorax mediastinal shift to the opposite size diaphragm is inverted in fluoroscopic examination so these are the causes of massive pleural effusion pleural effusion with mere no mediastinal shift i have already told discussed it before these are the some extra causes evart sign i already told you massive pericardial effusion with percussion load so here is the comparison pleural effusion versus hydrothorax or hydropneumothorax positive shifting dullness will be there in hydrothorax and hydropneumothorax there will be no shifting dullness pleural effusion has serous fluid and transduative fluid in hydrothorax this is very important and it usually bilateral it will have congestive cardiac failure as the most common cause for hydrothorax so they will have anasarca they will have no sign of inflammation until unless they have secondary infection over it, over the fluid they will have fluid in the other sacs there will be horizontal straight line of in percussion here they will have s shaped l s curve succussion splas or shifting dullness will be absent in pleural effusion empyema they will have fever intercostal tenderness or percussion tenderness lung abscess will have short history of illness clubbing foul smelling sputum empyema empyema means pus in the pleural cavity consolidation is also very very important because most of the time you will find pneumonia as a case given to you so you should know all the four stages of lobar pneumonia which has fine crepitations in the early stage and coarse crepitation in the late stage which i have already discussed you should know signs and symptoms of consolidations uh, which could which could be absent in case of elderly or alcoholic or immune compromised patients they will have these examination finding no mediastinal shift no fullness no volume loss only the de- movement is decreased dull on percussion ascultry triad this i have already discussed bronchophony bronchial breath sound and whisper pectoral okay these are the causes mostly are infected causes 
इंटस्टिशियल लंग डिजीज वेल क्रो कैपिटेशन इज अ वेरी क्लासिकल फीचर रिस्ट्रिक्टिव और कंस्ट्रक्टिव डिजीज विल बी देयर क्लबिंग माइट बी प्रेजेंट और साइनोसिस माइट बी देयर आई एल डी इज वेरी मोर कॉमन इन स्क्लीरोडर्मा पेशेंट दे विल बी ब्रेथलेसनेस विल बी मोर कंपेयर टू द स्पूटम प्रोडक्शन एंड स्क्लीरोडर्मा इज वेरी मोर कॉमन इन फीमेल्स कंपेयर टू द मेल Now coming to the diaphragmatic palsy, it could be unilateral or bilateral. Unilateral will be generally asymptomatic, and they will be diagnosed asymptomatic. I mean, incidentally, their diagnosis will be they would have gone for some other purpose, and incidentally, it is found. Bilateral diaphragmatic palsy will have severe classical uh, feature of breathlessness. It will be so dramatic, like patient cannot even lie down. He will have breathlessness. and unilateral uh, diagnosis diaphragmatic palsy is incidentally diagnosed in chest x-ray if the left diaphragm was similar to the sim- at the similar height to the right then left diaphragmatic palsy can be suspected in case of right hemi hemi diaphragm pa- paralysis costophrenic angle is very much acute the nerve supply of diaphragm is from the roots of c3 to c5 uh they give rise uh, they have through phrenic nerve but they can also have contribution from c2 to c7 also normally what happens is when um, a person does inspiration then diaphragm is lower down and it elevates diaphragm will elevate in case of expiration there is something called little sign Little sign there is flattening of diaphragm at the paralyzed hemi diaphragm due to the para- pleural sac distension and parietal pleural apposition with the diaphragm. It is seen in examination by looking at the shadow of the person or like you can keep a pen over the lower diaphragm. Look at the diaphragm movement. Diaphragm movement you have to see between seven to tenth rib in the mid axillary line or the. So there you can notice if there is slight change. or there is paradoxical movement then it could be called as little sign in seen in diaphragmatic paralysis if there is any flattening of diaphragm or decreased diaphragmatic movement then you can think of diaphragmatic palsy so pneumothorax they will have hypernasogenic percussion generally pneumothorax won't be given for your exam but it's a medical emergency that thing you should know and bronchitis will have history of tb coarse crackles lung cavity uh might be there which could be most common cause would be any infection or necrosis of the lung uh, which produces gas lung cavity also fo- could most commonly could be found by tb is very much common and these are the other causes mostly all are infectious causes few are like immunological or carcinoma then bronchitis bronchitis if any patient is admitted with bronchitis most their higher chances would be given for your exam they may they will have clubbing with pleural and copious sputum they might also have hemoptysis most common site for hemoptysis uh, bronchitis is left lower low because it is narrow and longer post tb if it is post tb then bronchitis will happen at upper low this is also very famous questions uh, they might ask you and uh, middle if the right side middle lobe is affected due to bronchitis then it is due to non mycobacterium tb ntm non tuberculous mycobacteria and middle lobe syndrome brock syndrome is t when tb affects the lymph node drainage it increase the size of lymph node this compresses the right bronchus uh, which also uh, slit uh, which makes the lumen to compress so that will be brock syndrome or middle lobe syndrome generally with uh, bronchitis they will ask you what are the syndrome associated with bronchitis so one is carter jenner syndrome which is very very important Bron- carter jenner will have bronchitis plus situs inverters another is yellow nail i already described yellow nail with pleural effusion then there might be young syndrome where they have carter jenner syndrome plus azoospermia there is one more syndrome which is uh, commonly associated with bronchitis is chandra khetpal syndrome which has sinusitis bronchitis and uh, ciliary abnormality 
COPD very very important very very important for your exam these all features you should know that there will be barrel shape shape chest if there's advanced there will be hover sign I have already told paradoxical inspiratory in drawing of lateral rib cage the type of breathing uh, they have will have as uh, they might have abdominal paradox which uh, in which uh, you can examine by bimanual palpation one hand is kept over patient chest and one over the abdomen then you see which is moving more and with inspiration expiration how the abdomen is bulging or the chest is bulging in COPD uh, they might ask you that there would be loss of bucket handle movement is lost and it is due to two factors one factor is there is loss of zone of apposition and medias and medial orientation of the diaphragmatic factors so these two factors are lost if apical impulse is shifted then it generally they even say fe1 is less than 50 percent this is one crude way of suggesting that it is very severe which has affected the apical impulse on auscultation uh, they might have v's and generally v's are produced by the vibration of narrow walls of the airways core pulmonale you should know the symptom external markers general examination finding chest examination and all generally the reason could be copd most common cause of core pulmonary copd the other cause is asthma pneumoconiosis pulmonary hypertension there would be disorder affecting thoracic cage like severe kyphoscoliosis or ankylosing spondylitis and it happens when there is a uh, right ventricular hypertrophy affecting the lung so this is very very important this is the feature of right heart right right, right ventricular failure and if you find uh, left parasternal heave or could be right ventricular hypertrophy or epigastric pulsation right ventricular failure will have enlarged liver which will be soft and tender uh, lung cancer if it is bronchogenic cancer then the patient will also have clubbing patient will be emaciated there will be no mediastinal shift unless it is complicated by effusion and generally uh, adenocarcinoma type is very common in female who are non-smokers and uh, these bronchogenic carcinoma can involve phrenic nerve causing diaphragm palsy so now moving on to some viva questions most common would be like what are you what is your diagnosis uh, what are the positive findings for your diagnosis what could be the differential diagnosis how will you investigate and manage this case where you will need spirometry or what all will you do what all plural fluid test you will do if you're doing plural fluid test then lights criteria they will ask what are the indication of thoracostomy uh, lung anatomy floating lip louis angle where the bifurcation of trachea happens lot of anatomy will happen uh, they will ask you surface marking of lung how do you diagnose copd asthma tb you have to learn in detail about especially about the diagnosis management uh, at home what all will you have to do manage how can you or symptom manage uh, drugs then drug doses everything tb copd uh, pneumonia this all and pleural effusion anything with that you have to get very thorough for any respiratory case and just i think by now you would have got this answer why right lobe is more affected in impyme or consolidation due to aspiration because right bronchus is more wider more vertical and more shorter so aspiration is more in uh, toward the right and aspiration itself is more common in elderly comatose patient or patient who are alcohol alcohol dependent because when they take higher amount of alcohol their cns goes dip under depression and their higher chances they may aspirate so if you guys want more videos subscribe to youtube my youtube channel and uh, this performer link would be given in the description box you can follow me on instagram facebook and see you guys in the next video tata bye bye and i'll try next to make a video on cardiovascular system give me some more time because it takes time to prepare so many slides and read and make sure that things are correct so it takes time to that so see you guys and study hard and definitely these videos are not going to replace your clinical posting you must attend your clinical posting and uh
learn through your master gurus teachers because this all opportunity will never get back internet these videos will be always there this is just it will simplify it will improve your understanding but in clinical posting you have to examine the patient without uh, examining the patient without learning with the patient uh, you can't improve your clinical skills see you guys tata bye bye